Messaging is a core part of any smartphone and it's something that Apple has really nailed with the iPhone and its iMessage platform. Googlers have recently taken to Twitter to voice their frustration about how Apple uses iMessage as a tool for locking. And while Apple's resistance to RCS and other cross-platform standards certainly is annoying, the context of Google's countless failures in messaging don't really help the company's case. So we're here to examine just what's gone wrong. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be notified about all our future uploads. I'm sure there's people out there wondering what's so great about iMessage, but we need to look back at the history. As Apple launched iMessage in 2011, alongside the debut of iOS 5 for iPhones. And at the time, SMS and MMS ruled the industry, with trillions of text messages sent every year in the US alone. Those messages came with charges from your carrier and complicated plans to manage that cost. iMessage came as a solution to that problem for many non-tech versed folk out there, offering messaging over Wi-Fi or data using the same old phone number that they've used for years. The original selling point for iMessage was the ability to send messages without being charged and at higher quality when sending pictures and videos. If iMessage wasn't available, whether that meant you didn't have a stable data connection or were texting someone without iMessage, the app would just automatically revert to SMS or MMS for messaging. Another big perk was that it brought messaging to other iOS devices, including the iPad and the iPod Touch. Now this is gonna sound alien to those of us outside the US, where the limited nature and expensive nature of SMS and MMS led to an explosion in the early days of smartphones of usage of third-party apps. But it's important to remember that iMessage is the default on iOS once you opt in and open messages for the first time with barely any input required. And there's nothing quite as seamless has existed for us Android users, at least from around the same period. To add insult to injury, just a year after its debut, the iMessage service came to the Mac and in the time since it has added support for message reactions, apps, Apple Pay, and many, many more features. But still, it remains exclusive to Apple's hardware, despite repeated calls most loudly in selected regions for it to expand to other platforms. Google's history of messaging apps since the debut of iMessage is less owned though, and much more convoluted. And Google has been working on messaging apps for well over a decade at this stage, and plenty of those have come since iMessage's debut back in 2011. Google's first real attempt though to compete with iMessage came back in 2013 with the arrival of Google Hangouts. The service, which was an extension of Google Plus's messaging services, brought together Android messaging all in one place. It had SMS, MMS, it had Google account-based instant messaging over data, and it had voice and video calls powered in part by Google Voice. Hangouts even also replaced the aging Google Talk, which had been popular for years before iMessage's debut. Truly, its promise was to be Google's all-in-one messaging solution, and unlike iMessage, it worked virtually everywhere with clients on Android, iOS, the web, smartwatches, and more devices too. In typical Google fashion though, Hangouts launched to a rough start. Some of its promises, such as actually killing off Google's other messaging services and being Android's default SMS client, weren't available on day one. But Google quickly improved the situation by pulling the plug on Google Plus's messenger services and bringing SMS support to Hangouts. And Google Voice wasn't too far behind. But by 2016, Google was starting to look at other messaging strategies for reasons no one really understands to this day. This included making Google Messenger, now Messages, the default SMS app on Android, the removal of SMS from the Hangouts app, and the real kicker, the launch of the ill-fated Google Allo. 2018 also marked the death of Hangouts when Google announced that classic Hangouts would be shut down in favor of its enterprise alternatives, which were nowhere near ready for consumers. In 2022, Hangouts technically still works, but it is a dead man walking. Google is pushing users towards Google Chat instead and the Messages app for SMS. Google even went as far as rebooting Voice a few years ago, further cementing that the dream of an all-in-one messaging app was something Google was entirely done with. And where Hangouts was designed to be the one messaging app to rule them all, like iMessage is to iOS users, Google Allo took more of a WhatsApp approach. Allo was a phone number based messaging app with end to end encryption as it's one of its key selling points. Further, it actually served as the first introduction to Google Assistant and had a lot of clever features and fun stickers to boot. Following its Google I.O. reveal alongside a video app duo, hype for Allo genuinely was really high. However, it ended up dying quickly after its first launch because it was limited on features, 
only worked on Android and iOS, and only one device at a time, and it lacked SMS integration entirely. Plus, it had to deal with WhatsApp as its main competition across the globe, with no real advantages over that extremely popular service. Allo ultimately was forgotten, and Google finally pulled the plug on the service back in 2019, barely three years after its big debut. In 2019, Google also started pushing for a new messaging effort, hopefully one that would outlast the others. RCS, or Rich Communication Services, is meant to be a replacement for SMS entirely on the backs of carriers signing onto the new technology. The technology itself has been around for a few years now, but at that point, it had no clear direction. Some carriers had their own siloed versions of RCS, while others just flat out ignored it. Google stepped up though with the goal of a universal RCS, and by way of Jibe, a company it had purchased years beforehand. The delivery method for RCS was Google Messages, which took over as Google's primary messaging app back in 2019, combining traditional SMS with number-based RCS messaging. Like Allo, the system was tied to a single device, but as a standard, it had potential to work with other messaging apps and really unify everyone into one standard. RCS's journey in the time since has been, well, complicated to say the least. The burden of actually implementing Google's RCS initiative was originally on carrier partners rather than Google itself, but then major US carriers blindsided Google with the announcement of their own RCS initiative in late 2019, which predictably fizzled out before doing anything just a couple of years later. Google went forward though and started making RCS available to every Android user on the planet over the course of 2019 and 2020, an initiative that has since been completed and even delivered end-to-end -end encryption. Of course, it still does require that Google Messages is the SMS app that people are using, which isn't always the case, unfortunately. In 2021, though, carriers even started signing on to adopt Google Messages for its Android phones that they'll sell in the US, essentially making RCS the default messaging experience across Android smartphones globally. But still, RCS just hasn't been the perfect solution and the alternative to iMessage we've all hoped. SMS remains the fallback for RCS when Android users are talking to iPhone users, an issue that Google clearly has problems with. Still, messages and RCS remain Google's primary initiative for consumer level messaging, even if there are half a dozen other options around there which do offer similar sorts of features. It would be hard to skip over Google's countless other messaging apps, because whereas iMessage is a central messaging app for Apple that works across platforms, Google has made countless messaging apps and services over the years. In fact, Google currently has nine messaging services in its portfolio as of early 2022. Looking back, Google has offered Talk, Voice, Wave, Buzz, Google Plus Messenger, Hangouts, Spaces, Allo, YouTube Messages, Google Chat for Businesses, Maps Messaging, Messages, Google Photos Messages, Stadia Messages, Google Pay Messaging, Google phone messages for businesses and Google chat for consumers. And that's not even mentioning the video apps such as Google Plus Hangouts, videos in Hangouts, Google Duo and Google Hangouts Meet, which is now finally known as Meet and is due to kill off the success that has been Duo. Ars Technica has done a fantastic breakdown of Google's many messaging apps. And while some of these smaller apps make sense in their own way, it really just shows how messy Google's approach has been to messaging. And we implore you to check that out if you get a chance. You'll find the link in the description down below if you do want to read that for yourself. So the big question probably on most people's lips is, will RCS be any different? And it's hard to deny that RCS has the potential in ways previous Google messaging apps did not, and that's because it's a standard and not a service. RCS is supposed to replace, at least for the most part, the aging and fairly limited SMS and MMS standards that carriers do still use and are still widely accepted as the standard in the United States and many other regions across the globe. Other messaging platforms have taken over in the rest of the world, but in the USA, most users seem often unwilling to adopt those superior experiences and instead just use whatever is pre-installed or built into their phone, limited as that may be, and that might explain why iMessage has exploded in popularity because US is the biggest iPhone market. The goal of RCS though, or at least Google's push behind it, is to bring better group chats, encrypted messages, better media quality, and more to that default messaging experience and make it better line up with what third parties like WhatsApp and Telegram provide. RCS has the potential to stick around indefinitely because it's a standard that isn't just on Google to implement. Carriers and others have reasons to want RCS to be mainstream and on as many devices as possible, and it finally seems like that is starting to slowly take over. RCS, given time, will probably succeed. The real question is, at this point, if Google will be happy with that final result. 
and if the experience will live up to what Apple has been able to deliver with iMessage or something as ubiquitous as in the rest of the world, such as WhatsApp, that's going to be though a little harder to guess and we're still going to wait to see just what happens. So that's Google's muddy history of messaging in a nutshell. And what do you want to see happen in future? Do you even care? I know from speaking from my own point of view, it's actually WhatsApp or bust here in the UK and I actually haven't sent an SMS in a good number of years. And that's even actually in using an iPhone for a little period in those years previous. Hopefully though, I hope you enjoyed this little back at some of Google's failed messaging efforts and it was an enlightening experience. And if we've actually missed out any messaging services, be sure to let us know down in the comments sections below. But as always, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.